During the making of this video, the operators of various mines have allowed the staging or the recreation of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. At times, incorrect procedures may have been intentionally left in the video sequences to allow mine safety instructors to ask, what's wrong with this picture? The conditions in stage scenes are in no way a true reflection of the condition or the operation of the mine shown in this video production. Finally, this video must be augmented by new MSHA rules and regulations that may be implemented at any time in addition to changes in your company's safety rules and regulations that may be put into practice. This video training program does not purport to cover all federal, state, and or your company's safety rules and regulations on the topics covered. For answers to any questions that you may have, consult with your supervisor or your company safety manager at once. More than 40 miners have lost their lives in accidents involving rail cars in the last 25 years. Two of them happened right here in my home state of Florida. Today, we will be sharing with you some safety recommendations for working with rail cars. We will also introduce a new safety vocabulary word. Listen carefully and see if you can pick it out. Several miners, including a truck driver in North Carolina who was acting as a temporary conductor, died at crossings. While moving two loaded cars by gravity, he was pinned between the rail car he was riding and a 35-ton haul truck, which attempted to cross the tracks in front of him. This is an actual state accident investigation report on a rail car fatality. Do you really want your family friends and co-workers to be reading a fatal accident investigation report about your death in a rail car accident? Do you want a report like this to be your epitaph? If not, do you want a lifelong crippling accident that prevents you from working and living the quality of life that you've dreamed of? Whether it's being crushed between two rail cars, being pulled under the wheels of a rail car, or hit injured or killed by a locomotive. These accidents are real and they're ugly. Today in this video, we're going to discuss safety procedures to prevent injuries around rail cars in the mining environment. We're going to include a personal wellness examination before you start your shift. The safe movement of rail cars on mine property interaction with mobile equipment, safe crossings and conspicuity, the art of seeing and being seen. You've performed a pre-shift inspection of your workplace and of your equipment, but have you performed a personal pre-shift? Right now, before you even start your shift, ask yourself, are you truly ready for work? Are you taking any new medications? Or have you accidentally taken two medications that may interact causing dizziness, drowsiness, or nausea? Are you experiencing a muscle strain or pull? Perhaps even a broken bone from an off-site, non-work-related injury? How about extraordinary mental or emotional stress? Have you just experienced a death in the family or with friends? Are you going through a divorce? Are you experiencing extraordinary financial stress? All of these situations can hinder your ability to focus on your job. They can be distractions that slow your ability to think and react. If any of these conditions are truly adversely affecting your ability to work and perform your job safely, Tell your supervisor immediately. You and he can assess the situation and make the decision on whether you should be performing your normal duties for that day.
Many accidents occur when moving, coupling, and uncoupling rail cars on mine property. To help give us safety pointers on the movement of rail cars and other rail car activities, we've asked Peter Bamford, a railroad safety consultant for over 20 years, to be with us today. If Peter could tell you only one thing about safety around rail cars, it would be this. We have to be ever diligent of what we're doing out there and be responsible for ourselves. We have to keep our eyes on the hazard and our mind on the hazard so we don't get caught in the line of fire or we don't lose our balance traction and grip out there because if we do, these cars are unforgiving when they're on the roll. All right, Peter, advice well taken. What would you say is the leading cause of accidents involving miners and rail cars? What I've found is many of the fatalities I've investigated and many, many of the serious critical injuries, life-sustaining injuries, are caused by those two key human factors, being complacent and not having their eyes and mind on the task. Let's look at some of the safety practices, the tools of safety that you can use to prevent rail car accidents and injuries. First, wear bright reflective personal protective equipment. This remote control operator and rail car unloader are wearing bright reflective vests. This supervisor and conductor are wearing white shirts with bright reflective stripes on them. See and be seen. This is your first line of defense on the railroad. Second, when working around rail car movement. Whenever you're working in a live rail yard or switching along a spur or working near the spur with even a front end loader, you gotta expect movement on any track at any time in any direction. That is critical. Easy enough. No more guessing games about having just a few more seconds to do what you're doing. Expect train movement at any time, all of the time. Third, when moving, coupling or uncoupling cars, maintain a positive line of radio communication and a line of sight communication between the conductor and the train locomotive engineer. There is a set of radio rules or procedures that you must use while operating a ra radio. Uh, you must repeat the order and you must ensure that when the movement commences that it only moves half the distance of what the order had said. If you don't hear back from the individual who's controlling the movement, you stop as a locomotive engineer and wait until he gets back on the radio again. Also, when coupling cars with a track mobile or locomotive, have the engineer stop short of the coupling point. Before you couple onto cars, you stop between 6 and 12 feet before the coupling. That ensures that you're not going to have a real rough coupling. It ensures that the movement is controlled because once you stop to back up the 6 or 12 feet, it's a fairly gentle couple that way. It reduces damage to the equipment and further reduces accidents. Before moving the locomotive during any operation, the engineer should sound the horn first and then move. Fourth, be careful of your footing and ground conditions in the area adjacent to railroad tracks. Generally, there's, there's uh, usually a slight incline for drainage. There's also uh, what we call dunnage, pieces of wood, uh, stones, rocks that are a fair size that could cause an ankle twist or a break or cause an individual to fall and possibly fall under the car. Look at the ground conditions adjacent to the tracks. Walk carefully, choosing your steps as you go. Always know the ground conditions and never, repeat, never walk on the rail line or rail head. This is a no zone that is never to be used as a pedestrian lane. Fifth, as a conductor, if you must throw a switch on rail tracks, Make sure that you stand outside the tracks. Like this conductor, stand behind the switch, press the foot latch release, and lift the switch handle to the other side. Then, press the foot latch until the switch handle is secured in the new position. After the switching is complete, visually inspect the track to make sure that the track is closed at the switching point. If the track hasn't closed properly, contact the locomotive engineer and stop all operations until the track is properly closed. Sixth, never attempt on foot to cross over rail cars at the coupling point. 
This is a no zone. Do not cross at this point whether cars are moving or stopped. Instead, use the ladder and the platform approach. Make sure the rail cars are stopped. Walk up to the ladder. Using the three-point system of contact, walk up the ladder steps to the platform. Carefully walk across the platform to the other side. Turn around and using the three-point system of contact, walk down the ladder and step away from the cars at ground level. Seventh, as a train man, when unloading rail cars using pinch bars at ground level, make certain that you have a positive lockout on the tracks and you are in a blue flag condition. To properly use the pinch bar method, stand completely clear of the railroad track and the rail car. Let the car come to a complete stop. Using the pinch bar, undo the top latch for the bay door. Then, open the bottom latch for the bay door. Do not overreach or overextend your arms or legs. Instead, flex your knees, keep your back straight, and stand close to the pinch bar when using it. Stand clear of the tracks, the rail cars, and the wheels when moving the cars for the next car to be unloaded. Finally, when working around rail cars, note that at some mines you will have trains that are operated by remote control power sources. Signage should be present to warn you that remote control rail cars are in operation. When remote controls are used, you need to be aware that an engineer may not be in the locomotive, that a positive line of sight may not be possible with the engineer, and indeed, locomotives and rail cars can be moving at any time, all of the time. In certain mining operations, silos and conveyor belts are used to load materials into rail cars. In other mines, mobile equipment will be used to load rail cars. The operator of mobile equipment should always perform a thorough pre-shift inspection before putting the equipment into operation. Prior to loading, the operator should inspect ground conditions at the loading area adjacent to the rail cars. The operator should be making sure that the ground conditions adjacent to the track where he's going to be doing car loading is fairly level, uh, not, doesn't have holes in it so it doesn't shake the load and hence doesn't bang into the car if he's out of control with the payloader and the load on it. Before loading any rail car, be absolutely certain that you have a positive lockout and a blue flag condition on the car or cars to be loaded. Additionally, how much space do you have for a backing and turning radius between the material stockpiles and the rail cars to be loaded? Is there additional truck traffic in the area? Will there be other mobile equipment operating and loading trucks adjacent to you? How much space do you have to work in and what traffic and congestion will you encounter? As a mobile equipment operator, Always wear your seat belt when in the cab and the machine is in operation. From the seat, how is your visibility? Are your mirrors clean and are they properly positioned? Have you looked over your left, then right, then left shoulder again before backing the machine? Are you looking for all miners, pedestrians, and subcontractors who may be on foot around you? If your visibility is in any way restricted, Use a flagman spotter to assist you in backing. Maintain a constant safe speed. Approach the stockpile. Fill your bucket. After looking over both shoulders, back up far enough to gain room to turn. Proceed to turn and roll in the direction of the rail cars. Slow your speed as you approach the car to be loaded. Come to a stop before reaching the car. Then. Proceed slowly until your bucket is over the car. Now, dump the materials into the car. Look over both shoulders, and if the pathway is clear, begin the process again. Adjust your speed slower if it's raining, foggy, nighttime, or any other adverse conditions affect your ability to operate safely. 
If in going to and from a loading site, you must cross railroad tracks, cross only at marked crossings where mobile equipment and other vehicles are allowed to cross. The first and foremost rule of thumb at crossings is this. In North America, there's over a thousand people a year get killed at crossings just trying to beat the train in their own motor vehicle. It's an, a senseless waste of life, and I don't know what they're trying to, <laughs> trying to do there. How can you miss a train coming? But they try to outrun the train at the crossing. And quite frankly, the train always wins. On private mine property, crossing guard arms and flashing lights aren't required at rail crossings. However, you might consider putting up smaller crossing arms and warning signs such as at this mine and at entrances like it. When approaching a crossing with multiple tracks, remember darkness affects your vision, depth perception, and the ability to determine which track the train is on. Particularly when you have a locomotive approaching with the headlights and what we call the ditch lights or running lights are on, you can't really tell what track that train's coming down. You have to make sure that you're standing well clear of all tracks when there's a train approaching until you can positively ascertain what track he is or they are on. And having said that, you have to make sure you're at least one track away from it. Whether at night or in daylight, cross tracks only where crossings are marked and it's permitted. In a vehicle of any kind when approaching a crossing, slow down, choose a lower gear, check your brakes, and stop before you get to the crossing. Stop look, listen, and proceed only when all tracks are clear. The same procedure is used by pedestrians. Stop short of the tracks, stop, look, listen, and proceed only when all tracks are clear. Also, never allow a vehicle to roll back on the tracks as you are crossing the tracks. Never, repeat, never stop a vehicle on the tracks, and as a pedestrian, Never stop on the tracks. Today, we've given you some very specific safety practices for operating around rail cars in the mining environment. Review and memorize these safety procedures. Never let your guard down. We have to be responsible for our own safety in here. That's what it's all about. You gotta be out there for yourself and look after yourself around working railroads. Well, as the train rolls off into the sunset, here we are at the end of another exciting mine safety training video. Thank you for being with us today, and until next time, work safe.